This week, we'll be talking about the time-defying Battlefield Portal. Could the first-person shooter genre be ruined by a new AI-assisted aimbot? And Activision Blizzard are facing damaging allegations. Welcome to episode 33 of the Retro Gaming Dads podcast, the weekly podcast for everything retro and retro-inspired. Today, I'm Anthony, and I'm joined by Phil and Barry. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Before we get into uh, all this news, so how's your week been? Hey, mine's not, I can't complain really too much. Been playing a bit of Perfect Dark. Been playing Final Fantasy XIV as well, actually. Yeah, I spotted you were on that. Yeah, I've been enjoying that. Obviously, as you two are aware, I was away last week enjoying the sun. Uh, I got sunburned, which is annoying for myself. And I missed out on a very good couple of episodes as well, which I'm really upset about. You're the one that chose to go on holiday. Oh my yeah. God, I planned this weeks ago, <laughs> let alone this came up just then. Well, you should have knew that there'd be some big mecha news on the week that you're on holiday. I, I was dying aside when I was listening to that <laughs> podcast, okay? Don't start. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. He came in the next day and said that we really fluffed up talking about Pokemon because we hesitated for a split second thinking about the Pokemon games. He's like, going, oh yeah, you you fluffed it all up. If I if I was there, you know, we would have gotten them straight away. I was like, oh. If, we, if you were there, we'd still be talking about them now, to be honest. It's true. It's very, very true. Well, the only bit of gaming I've got done so far this week is uh, me typical jump on PSO for 20 minutes to do me dailies except now i have a new little wingman elliot will go get a controller i'll make sure it's one without batteries in but don't tell him that (laughs) sit down next to me and every time i see a green box he'll point it out on the screen i have to run up to it and wait for him to press the green button or what or whatever color button corresponds with the, the crate so typically the green ones and he'll press it and i've got to attack it so it opens at the right time I once didn't notice he didn't press the button and just broke up in the box. He looked at me and went, Daddy, I didn't press that button. I was like, oh no, <laughs> the illusion shattered. So it now takes you three times as long to do this. Oh, yeah, oh, every time I go, especially the wetlands part where there's just green boxes everywhere, it just takes me forever to actually get past that point because he's going, no, you missed the box. Go back, go get that box. It's cute, though, and it's good bonding. No, it was cute the first time. <laughs> now, I come home, I am shattered, and he's like, Daddy, can we play the game? I'm like, oh, God. I just want to go to bed. I'm tired. <laughs> so. See, whilst I was away, I took my Switch with me, and I managed to play through a good chunk of um, Bowser's Fury. No, I think I need to use my Switch a little bit more, to be honest. Um, I've actually got quite a few games I haven't even played on my Switch yet. Are they still wrapped up in a box? No, no, they're all open. Except Alex Kid. Alex Kid's still uh, sealed. <laughs> I haven't opened well, that yet. I, I've got my Switch and a bunch of games on there that are totally on my to-be-completed list that I'll get to at some point. Oh, I've, got, I've got loads of Switch games. I've got some that I got for Christmas or birthdays like a couple of years ago and still haven't even got around to playing them properly. <laughs> Just Switch games. I'm sure we've just got piles of games in general. It's true. Well, while we're talking about new games, have you seen Pie Packers introducing a few more titles? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and oddly enough, these are all single-player NES-style games. Interesting they're going for single-player games. The big thing I found with Pie Packer is it is definitely aimed at, at multiplayer. Well, there was only four or five four-player games, wasn't there? Yeah, but most other games, when we tried it initially, were at least uh, two-player, weren't they? Yeah. Um, I have no issue with them adding more single-player games to it, to be honest. Oh, no, no no issue with it. It's just a surprise that it's only single-player games with the multiplayer aspect and focus that they seem to have, is all of them. Yeah, but don't forget they already had Earthworm Jim in there. That's another single-player game. True. It's true. There is definitely single-player games on there. So these games, they are modern NES games. Right. And they're all platformers, so there's not a lot of variety in them, unfortunately. Flea actually looks quite good. Uh, It looks like it plays similar to a game called Celeste, if you've seen that. I've seen it, I've not played it. No. Or or not a million miles away from Super Meat Boy, if you played that one. I played that one, yeah. (laughs) Yes, I played that. Quite a tricky platformer. 
Uh, second game, Doodle World, looks like a slightly more amateurish version of Flick. <laughs> to be honest, it looks very similar. I had similar. a quick look at it. And the, the uh, art style was a bit interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, um, it was like a hand-drawn, crayon sort of yeah. style. <laughs> it's very then, childish looking. And then the final game, Kubo 3, looks like an even more amateurish sort <laughs> of... Uh, it looks like something that we would have probably done in Game Factory. Um, right. I must admit, wow. watching the trailer for it did not make me think, oh, I'll try that. It made me think, oh, don't let anything on this service. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need games, quick. <laughs> in all fairness, it might be a perfectly serviceable game, but its first impressions weren't that great. You know, the fact that they're still adding new games onto there. We'll have to get on and play that Bomberman style game as well. Yeah, we will. We've not yeah. played that one for a little while, have we? No, no, and it's been a while since Phil accused one of us for cheating. Yeah, I mean, I, oh, what the heck? I'm with you, Barry. I think the sheet just blew up because he left it so long. The, the more I think about it, the more I, uh, that's actually what I think. Because from what I remember, it was bouncing. It around. was, it was too perfectly placed to be that. It was, it couldn't have been in a better place. But before we get too hung up on somebody <laughs> detonating a sheep. By the way, we're talking about worms. We don't go out into the countryside and like <laughs> <laughs> and blow up sheep where we want to. But yeah, ultimately, the more games they add to the service, the better. As long as they're not football games, they have enough PlayStation era football games on that service to last anyone a lifetime. Yeah, there was a few. <sighs> yeah, way too many. Talking about football, though, Konami are rebranding Pro Evolution Soccer. Yeah, for the second time. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this was probably one of the last football games I played on the N64 when it was um, International Superstar Soccer, I think it was called. It says a lot that that was the last football game that you played. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. International Superstar Soccer, I think it was called. I never oh, played the game when it was called that at all. I've nice. only ever known it as Pez. So what are they calling it, first of all? E-football. Now, I'm Why? I'm not a big football fan. I'm not a big Pro Evolution soccer fan. But to me, I think that sounds like a terrible name. It does sound a bit terrible, I'll be honest. Though they are making it free to play. Why couldn't they have sticked with Pez or Pro Evolution soccer? Honestly, I'm not sure. Cause, I mean, I everybody football. Maybe I think electronic football. They're just trying to be known as the electronic football brand. I don't know. I remember Pro Evolution Soccer back years ago. The office where I worked had a PlayStation Two, and it was a main game that was played. So I've played a bit of Pets, but I, I don't know where they're going with this name change. I haven't played much Pez at all myself. FIFA is the one I've played more than anything. I think it's quite interesting the fact that going down a free-to-play route, but then going free-to-play, are they not expecting to get any revenue anywhere? Or are they put oh, something? Oh, it's Konami. <laughs> They'll expect to get revenue. Don't you worry about that. Konami literally just do... Um, thinking about, oh, what's they call? Pachinko. Pachinko, that's the word I'm looking yeah. for. I was about to say, what you'll have to do is before every match, you don't get to select your team. They'll probably have like a pachinko machine which selects it for you. <laughs> I can believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely going to have microtransactions all over the show. They are. I, I, I bet you'll they'll have some sort of ultimate team sort of yeah. set up as well. Interesting that they're sticking with an annual release schedule though. Well, I think it's probably going to be more a live service so it won't be like you'll have eFootball, eFootball 2022, 2023 and so on I think they'll just continuously release live updates. So obviously you've got like your transfers, new players coming in, changing of kits Well I think the big thing with Pro Evolution Soccer from what I remember they didn't have a lot of the licenses so some of the team names were changed some of the players Um, names were changed I don't know. I thought they did. I just didn't think they tended to have the player likeness. But they no, definitely I, have in more recent times. I remember when I used to play it on the PlayStation 2. Whether this has changed, I don't know. You had Liverpool Red and Liverpool Blue because it didn't have the licenses fully. 
and then some of the names were changed. That sounds more like sensible soccer, to be honest. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, I just remember there being something around the, the, the license in it. They didn't have everything. Yeah. So you didn't have they a just slightly changed the name yeah. and stuff like that to make it. So, it, you know, they weren't getting done because it wasn't. The exactly. Thing. Yeah. So f- there is a wonder about that, whether that's a thing. No, um, I, would, also, I would imagine they probably will get licenses because I'm yeah. certain. Again, I haven't played any of these games in like over two decades, but I'm pretty certain that they have had licenses for play lightness teams and all that. Maybe. I, as I say, I, like you, I don't know. I don't play football games. I don't know. Though, here's the question. FIFA is the obvious beast in the industry. Yeah. Will it allow Pro Evolution Soccer to overtake FIFA? I don't know. Pro Evolution Soccer has always been a distant second to FIFA. Yeah. I doubt that will change. EA, they've got pretty much an iron grip on the football games, oh, yeah. haven't they? Yeah, they hold the market and it completely. Yeah, like I've never heard people going, "Oh, I can't wait for the new Pro Evolution Soccer." But I know plenty of people who've literally bought a console just so they can play the new version of um, FIFA. Yeah, yeah, there's way tons of people that literally will just buy FIFA, Call of Duty, and a couple of other games, and that's I, about I it. I literally know people who only buy FIFA. Yeah, oh, I can Nothing believe else, it. I... Just FIFA. I can believe it. But while we're talking about FIFA, EA, and FIFA in particular, have got a bit of news themselves, haven't they? They're releasing FIFA 22 for uh, the Nintendo Switch, aren't they? Wow. Well, it's a legacy edition they're releasing. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, they're releasing <laughs> FIFA 2022 on a, a lot of systems, but beyond the typical microtransactions and all that that gets dragged up every year when they release a new version, their um, decision to re-release... Oh, sorry, to release, sorry. Sorry, I got ahead of myself there. The Legacy Edition for the Switch is not going down well. I wonder why that is. So, do either of you two know what this Legacy Edition of a game means? Isn't it effectively FIFA 2018 with a bit of an update in terms Uh, of the names? Essentially, yeah. Just teams and kits have been updated. That's literally (sighs) it. Yeah. What's the point? Yeah, because we were talking about it the other day, and it's practically reskinned. It's 2018. Not practically, like it is. is. With everything. Well, it is. <laughs> Sorry, it is. <laughs> and it's just put all the transfers into the right place, uh, you know, pe- uh, players in the right places yeah. and all that, which, why do you have to pay for it? Well, this is something that they typically <laughs> charge do. full price for as well. So £45. But don't worry, EA, the. They're starting to feel a tiny bit of guilt for selling you the same game for the fourth year on the run. So it's only going to be thirty nine ninety nine, not forty four ninety nine. So generous! Wow, yeah. five pounds. Hey, five pounds. That's that's like I don't know. Get some from McDonald's for that. But they wouldn't do it if people didn't buy it. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. People do buy, it. but I also think a lot of people buy it not understanding what it is. Imagine Victor was into FIFA games and you go, oh, we've got a Switch, new FIFA game, I'll grab him that. It's true. You don't know that it's practically the same game as last year and the year before and the year before that. You're right. You are right. Well, you're saying that. I remember when I used to work at um, Tesco's and I remember doing a midnight launch for a FIFA game and I thought, no one's going to come in. I don't see why. And there was a massive queue of people Tesco's. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I would not have thought FIFA would have dragged loads of people to come and buy it for a midnight release. Yeah. Like, I don't get it. And I think, you know, again, reading through this and seeing about the new Legacy Edition coming out, it's not just that you're buying a you know, the new game, you're a new game. The Ultimate Team also gets reset as well, doesn't it? It doesn't carry across from your previous versions. Yep. Oh, yeah. Across, across all the versions. Yeah. That's something that, again, the same people I know who bought a console just to play FIFA would invest maybe over the year a couple of hundred pounds into Ultimate Team only to lose it, to then redo it for the following year. Um, Yeah. It's predatory at best. I was was literally about to say it's very predatory. And uh, I just don't understand it. Um, Going back to Legacy Edition really quick, though. I will be curious to see if 
IGN for the third or fourth year on the run it'll be now. Just copy and paste the same review, but score it even lower again. Because that's what they've done the last couple of years. I wouldn't be surprised. We can help. I would also say, I wonder if it can get a lower Metacritic score from users, but it's currently on 0.2. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so, 0. 0.1. Well, yeah. Th- Can it even hit zero? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's probably probably one of those where you see like someone leave a review on Amazon and it's one star and they go, I only give you one star because I had to. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't give you less. Yeah. On top of this, not quite as controversial as the Legacy Editions, but it looks like PC FIFA fans are getting a bum deal as well yeah this one's a bit of a strange one yeah so one of the big selling points for the new fifa is this new ai assisted hyper motion animation engine which from the trailer i watched actually looks quite good it makes players look like they move a lot more realistically and hopefully we'll get some uh, weird glitches out of it as we always do when ea change the animation system we're like two players run into each other and one of them just launches off to space of some tiny players tiny players (laughs) tiny players or giant goalies (laughs) but anyway that that's fifa 22's big selling feature but it won't be coming to pc bizarre on this one i mean of all the systems to be able to handle it people that spend money on pcs can can handle it yeah they're saying that a lot of or a sizable portion of the player base might not have a machine powerful enough to run this new AI engine. So instead, they're going to get the previous generation version, the version that comes out on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. If only PC games were used to being able to, you know, toggle the settings on their games to to make sure that things run. I was run. about to say. Yeah, how do they know that people won't have systems that can utilize it. I would imagine they'd scrape a lot of data about people playing games on Origin. No, but not like that, though. You know, how... I I don't understand it. Why take it away when, like Phil said, people can change graphics down, so it matches it. Why take it away? The pessimist in me says (laughs) to sell it to you later. Well, yeah, probably. (laughs) Yeah, actually. (laughs) I'm "I'm missing this. Hang on a minute. We'll give you an update, which will cost you Fifteen pounds, or why waste money on a new feature for a new system when you can just not do it? Because <laughs> <laughs> also FIFA has a very low like trade and resale value as well. well oh yeah, it, it, last so, year FIFA got drops to about ninety nine p. Yeah, it, it goes down so quickly. The value drops it so fast. Absolutely. Uh, so you just kind of think, well, I'm not going to spend 39.99. Wait three months, and it'll lead you to drop down to less than half. It's than because that. of the amount of people that will just go out day one, buy it. They make yeah. millions, billions, probably, on FIFA. But not yeah. only that, what's the point of having a football game if it's out of date? Yeah. Not only that, but everyone who plays it online has moved on to the most current version. There is yeah. no reason to really buy last year's version or the year before and so on however the ea are running the dual entitlement promotion for fifa 22 this year right so okay so it sounds like they're doing something nice for people here. oh no no don't get ahead of yourself <laughs> <laughs> so what they done last year they've done dual entitlement if you bought it for the xbox one or the playstation 4 when you got your new xbox series x or series s or playstation 5 they would upgrade you for free. They did, a, they did a lot of this from Xbox 360 to the Xbox One when that came out as well. Yeah. Well, they're doing it again this year. Except what they don't make very clear is it's only if you buy the $100 Ultimate Edition. Oh. So if you buy the wow. $60 Standard Edition, you can play it on the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5, but it's just playing in backwards compatibility you won't get the new mo- uh, the new version with the hyper motion animation and all that lot so it's it's not play anywhere then it's do you mean on the xbox yeah uh, it's not play anywhere not play anywhere it's um 
Smart delivery? Smart delivery, that's the one. Technically, yes, if you buy the $100 version. If not, you cheapskate, not a chance. Like last year, last year it was if you bought any standard version of the game or the Ultimate Edition. If you look at the question and answers on the website, you have to go down about five or six questions to get the answer before they say, oh, it's only for the Ultimate version, though. It's one of those where they've got like a little asterisk next to it and you have to scroll down the page to find out what it's for. EA, can they get worse? <sighs> Listening Probably. and talking about this just... Yeah ruins EA and FIFA even more for me. Well, I mean, it's all... not hard to ruin EA. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I know the money grabbing, but it just kind of puts a bad taste in your mouth. I remember when EA were the company that was like, we're the little scrappy guys, we're fighting for the players and we're fighting for the, well, as the name originally was, the electronic artists. So the idea yeah. was, we're going to put the power into the people making these games, not publishers. You know, it's the developers, the creators that deserve the recognition and the money for it. And then they got big. Yeah. Like they even went as far as to reverse engineer the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis. So they didn't have to pay a licensing fee to Sega. That's why, do you remember EA cartridges? The oh yeah, they were always what every yeah, other yeah. Mega Drive cartridge. Yeah, and now they're just. How much can we just take every single customer for? And yeah. don't get me wrong, they're a company. I understand they've got to make money, but re-releasing the same game for the third or fourth year on their own, and just updating a couple of kits and selling it at near enough full price for a title. I mean, that in itself, in that in itself, is pretty anus. Why can't they do that as a £10, £15 DLC? Upgrade DLC, yeah. Exactly. That still thing's just ridiculous because it's just an update just to change the rosters for after the transfer winner that. So yeah. why? It just... Yeah. Actually, going know. back to Sensible Soccer, I remember on the cover of a lot of Amiga magazines each year, they'd actually give you an update disc which would have all the new player names and yeah. new teams. Okay. Like in all fairness, it was just someone they're typing the names in essentially, you know, there was no like likeness of them or anything. I suppose while we're on about companies and bad news. <laughs> but what while we're on about gaming getting ruined. <laughs> yeah. There's a new aimbot on the market. Yes. And this one looks particularly nasty. Um it looks nasty. Yeah. Like, ridiculous. This would Yeah. Rage quitting, I reckon, is going to be a big thing if you come against this aimbot. In the really, really rare instance, I'm actually agreeing with Activision's stance on this. <laughs> yeah, especially that hurt yeah. Say, talking about no, later. Well, yeah, that hurt to say. <laughs> I could see it basically hurting you there. Really quickly, aimbots, they've been a thing. I remember them on um, Half-Life and yeah. Opposing Forces. Anti, it's one of those standard things, though, isn't it? Aimbots come out, anti cheats fight them. The yes. war continues. You know, you, you can they, they can tell you're running a piece of software. It's automatically tracking it in a lot of cases, automatically firing perfect headshots every single time. However, this one's different because this is using AI, which is a bit of a buzzword at the moment, I, I guess. But this actually isn't a program running on your computer. You do need a second computer to use this. And what it does is through a video capture card, analyzes the video, learns the game, learns what characters are enemies, what characters are friendlies, and then using a interface device will actually go from tweaking your aim slightly. You know, so if you just about to miss or you just wasn't quite on a headshot it'll just nudge you a little bit in the right direction to just just line it up ready for the shot essentially just doing it for you however it adds in things like jitter so you your hand is never perfectly still on a mouse or a controller it jitters slightly so it emulates that so software can't go they literally 360 no scoped pinpoint precision but did not move from that perfect curve 
it'll add jitter, so it looks like it was a real person who'd done it. Yeah, so as as you're moving, as you're going around, it's dropping it up and down for sides and sideways, and it yeah. yeah well, well the, these are probably like by, make it look by pixels amount. You know, as you move your thumb, you've got a bit of jitter in your thumb and that. And the the worst thing is this isn't even limited to PC. This can be used on pretty much any console that it can emulate the input for. So Xbox, PlayStation, Switch. I mean, the the implications of this kind of, I want to say software, but it's a bit more than that. But the the implications of this particular aimbot, I mean, what could it mean for esports as well? Because you've got like competitions which are home based for people on Fortnite and the like, where this could literally Mm. tip the scales massively and have people winning large sums of money. Well, yeah, because Barry, they, wasn't you saying that some streamers use it and they brag yeah, about some, using some it? Some streamers were, have shown how it works, and so obviously the, they'll yeah. probably get banned because they have proof they're using it. But had they not streamed it, they can prove that they were using this piece of software. I say the only thing that's probably going to limit it being used is the fact that you need not only the machine that you're playing on, whether it's PC or games console but a second PC and a video capture card and it one of those devices that you can plug in, say, your Xbox or PlayStation that allows you to plug a keyboard and mouse in. You need one yeah. of them so that it can uh, like inject inputs into it. I wouldn't want to be playing, say, Halo Infinite, of which yeah. I have actually got an invite to the to the beta this week. And Lucky get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, won't have ch- I won't have a chance to play it, Lev, but I have had... I had an invite. Um, <laughs> Practically the invite. But yeah, you know, that would absolutely ruin a game if someone just perfectly sniped you every single time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely would. It's one of these, I just don't understand where they get the enjoyment from. Well, and know that though, my other thought is, why do we create these aim bots? You know, why do people think, I, I, I know they're going to get money there's, for it. There's sometimes. a very easy, yeah, I was going to yes, say, there's a very easy answer to that. Money is why they make them because people pay lots of oh, money for yeah. them. Just hasn't haven't they estimated horrible. that this one's already had a few hundred million downloads? No, no, they reckon it's about five hundred downloads. Oh, 500. Activision got straight in with legal threats and got them to take it down, but they'd already had it downloaded about yeah. five hundred times. But the thing is, once it's downloaded, what's stop? One of those people uploading yeah. it and more people downloading oh, it. Oh yeah, it's it's out there now. It's something that people may not share for months or years, but then suddenly it explodes. Or oh, what's to stop someone else just going and making their own? Yeah, I mean the fact that this is a thing that exists. Yeah, yeah. Someone's made it. It's a thing. But yeah, like I say, it's one of the rare times that I actually agree with Activision. Yeah. Really quickly before we go on to the next one, it's not actually something we plan to talk about but have if you two seen the state of titanfall at the moment no it's it's not having a good time at the minute though is it is it not no hackers have shut it down basically yeah titanfall is completely unplayable and yet ea is still selling it they haven't stopped selling me. it you cannot play titanfall because you can't play it in single player and hackers have made it so as soon as you try and go into a game, it fills the game up with bots. So you can't actually get into the game. Titanfall 2, they've started going after streamers. I don't know the actual details, but they seem to be manipulating the back end of Titanfall 2. And they're basically blacklisting all these streamers and anyone they play with, and anyone they just fancy blacklisting anyway. And as soon as you go into a game with one person on this blacklist, the game crashes and it cuts out for every single player in the match. Flipping out. Right. <laughs> and it's still in the game. It's a shame because Titanfall 2 is a brilliant game. Yeah, Titanfall, Titanfall was a brilliant was... game. Oh, and this isn't just on PC. This is on console as well. So just because you're playing it on Xbox or PlayStation, it doesn't matter. Why? 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 Don't know. Ruining... EA aren't really doing anything about it. That doesn't surprise me. Respawn have said, oh, we're going to look into it, but apparently that was a few weeks ago and nothing's changed. And again, EA is still selling both of these games. 
In fact, they had a sale for Titanfall while this was going on. So people were buying Ooh. it on sale and could not play it. Because even if you want to play the campaign, it's still an online Which It's multiplayer, match. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, you have to be online. You have to go into online lobbies to <sighs> play the campaign. Yeah. Hey. Well, on to more bad news. And oh. some pretty disgusting news, actually. Yeah, this one's, this one's horrific. Yeah, I mean, there's no easy way of talking about this one, is there? They are... There's lots of sexual harassment lawsuits being thrown around at them by the state, no less. Yeah, state of California, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and Blizzard are the, in a bad place. Yeah, the actual allegations that are coming out, they don't make for easy reading. No. Um, I, I think the one that is unfortunate that happened, and it's unfortunate that the family of this woman's probably hearing about it a lot, but it is definitely yeah. the one that needs to be talked about. Yeah. Probably the main one that's being talked about is a woman who committed suicide and she may have had other things going on in her life, but absolutely what happened at Activision did not help. No, so no. I believe just before she committed suicide, male colleagues were passing around intimate photo of her. Yeah. Well, the allegation partly is that there's a frat style culture at Activision Blizzard, which yeah. is bad for any any women that are working there, any minorities that are working there, are having to deal with this frat culture, and it is making for a very toxic work environment. Yeah. They were saying that is a lot of it's down to they had a couple of um, company retreats and that sort of stuff, and well, the stuff was happening there from the male colleagues just yeah. unfortunately. Well, it was at one of those retreats that yeah. this this poor woman actually took her own life. Yeah, because didn't her manager also turn up with some, for lack of a better word, adult toys? <sighs> Which, I, it's I shocking. It's really put Blizzard and Activision Blizzard in a really, really bad light for me. I know. You know they've done great games, they've done good work, and now they've just tainted themselves. I, I love Blizzard games. I cannot foresee me, unless there are some serious changes at Blizzard, I cannot see me buying any more games of this. No, I, I definitely won't be buying anything like uh, Diablo 2 Remaster or anything like that. See, I, I probably would have picked up Diablo 2 Remaster, I would have picked up Diablo 4, I would have oh, picked you, up you Overwatch would. 2. I know I would, because I love those games, but I'm not. You just feel sorry for them. I, I, I don't know, it's absolute absolutely disgusting and not that it was only this one instance that it seems to be prevalent throughout a lot of the company a lot of the stories yeah. that i was reading was women were going to like hr and were either being told to oh you know suck it up it's a joke it's the culture of the company or being told oh we'll look into it and next to nothing was actually being done yeah, I mean, even the actual statement that Blizzard have put out was effectively saying, yeah, we'll look into it. The fact that the state has raised this, you know, it it, it's not like yeah. it was, you know, someone's gone to a lawyer or something. It's the state of California that's going against them. Yeah. That's really, really serious, the fact that they've had to step in. I, and I know it's absolutely shocking. A lot of people have cancelled the World of Warcraft subscriptions. Um, a lot of them, right. I can't think what the term is actually called, but they're already locked in because they've pre-purchased, say, six months ahead or anything. Yeah. So what a lot of those players done is they staged a sit-in in World of Warcraft, and it's unfortunately compared to the bad that's happened, at least it's a little bit of good. They actually raised quite a bit of money for... Um, a charity called Black Girls Coding. Right. So they're not playing the game. They're raising awareness within the game because some people may be playing it and not aware of what's going on. Yeah. Um, but a lot, a lot of people are just canceling the World of Warcraft subscriptions. Plus, I can, yeah. I'm not sure if it's already happened or it'll be happening a bit later on, but there's going to be a walkout at Activision, isn't there? Yes, is there correct? is. Yeah, it got announced today that they're doing a walkout and a protest. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was going to say, on the day that we're recording this, there is a planned walkout. Yeah. Uh, whether that is happening as we are recording or after we record, obviously we were based in the UK, so time differences. As much as we say EA is a bad company, this you can't I mean, even compare it to some of these you can't, stories. No. And I you hope, can't. I hope they are more isolated to Activision, to be honest, rather than through the whole industry. It, well... Because the thing is, something like this, this will tarnish the entire industry. Oh, yeah, absolutely it will. Absolutely it will. But for any sort of recovery for uh, Activision Blizzard, there needs to be sweeping changes. Absolutely. And that's it, even if they can recover. I'm curious, because I always thought Bungie got away from Activision, like, really easily. You know, they got to keep the IP that they created. Yeah, and got a clean cut. They didn't have to see through the ten years. I'm wondering if something like this had had any impact on it. They knew something, maybe or something happened, and they were like, "Look, let us out, or we're going to spread it." I mean, not not to say exactly, yeah, not to say that that's what happened. But you know, if they'd got wind of it and got on and said, "Look, you will let us go with all of this, or we're leaking it," I don't think it would have been that point. But I possibly would have thought like. Listen, look how you are treating us, and yeah, maybe I don't know, I don't know, but I I always thought it was weird that Bungie managed to get away from Activision. Yeah, pretty, it, it, pretty scot free overall. It felt very light for when you think of Activision as a as a company. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's I I have liked Blizzard games for a very long time. I've played a good chunk of them, and. It makes not want it, to play it at all now. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It it really saddens me to see that this could happen for such what is to many fans a very beloved company. Like StarCraft. Yeah. I'm not very good at it, but I like playing StarCraft. I couldn't play a game of StarCraft at the moment. I know. I, and I, I, that's I something couldn't. that they are not getting additional money from me. They've already got my money no, no. decades ago. I mean, I've talked about it in the past that I'm, I don't particularly like buying Activision games for the way they treated a lot of the Bungie staff around the yeah. time of the division when that came out, yeah. and a lot of the divisions, around, a lot of the the stuff that came out around um, Destiny. I said the division yeah. meant Destiny. Yeah. Um, that really, t- and I've not even bought Sekiro for the same reason, and that is a game I would absolutely love to play. Yeah, but I've not forked over the money for Sekiro because I don't want to support Activision. Phil, like you said earlier, Overwatch, really, really beloved game. I absolutely yeah. loved it, and I played. I've played that for hours and hours, and I was looking forward to Overwatch two. And now I'm like, well, nope, done. done no, nope. you know, I'm not interested. In all honesty, I cannot buy that game in good conscience. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what I mean. You know, yeah. we hope oh, no, that it, it gets sorted. It's, it's left a very Sour not even not even a sour taste just honestly I, I hearing some of the stuff i actually feel a bit numb to it that it yeah it doesn't seem like what you would think would actually happen and yeah. i say for poor woman I, I i'm not saying what happened at her place of work was the entire reason but it's definitely going to have been a it's going to be a contributing factor absolutely well, before we get onto it too much of a downer, should we should we move on from this? Yes. So, next bit of news, a uh, really quick one. Anyone who's got a Nintendo Switch and got Nintendo Online, there's three more Super Nintendo games coming across. Uh, to be honest, they're, they're definitely not this they're not great finest. Games, no. So, I can't, I've not heard of any of them. Playmates, Jelly Boy, and um kablooey and yes i had a quick look at the games and they don't they don't look fantastic at all yeah i think you'll recognize jelly boy phil um well right it was it was one of those games that i wouldn't say it was shovelware but it was one of those that was like the the b tier sort of releases that you got on consoles back then right not not really the uh the finer showings that nintendo have for the no, snes I th- I don't know it's going to be licensing issues, but Nintendo need to get, as well as bringing out somewhat 
less popular games like this, they do need to get something like Chrono Trigger or... Oh, God, you know, yeah. it's, per- Perhaps not specifically Chrono Trigger, but a, a big hit like every couple of months. It just hasn't seemed to be anything. Oh, they've got the fantastic service, which obviously is the Nintendo Online bit where you do get the NES and the SNES games for free. I don't feel like they've utilized that as much as they could have done. If they're running out of NES and SNES games, put Game Boy and Game Boy Advance on there. Yeah. GameCube? Well, I think they'd go up to the N64 before the GameCube. And well, yeah, the I think N64 the file well. sizes then are getting significantly larger. Mm. But Game Boy... There's still a big catalog they can use. Yeah. There's plenty of great games in there. Speaking of great games, Dead Space, the remake, officially announced. Yeah, um, was it last yes. week we talked about this or the week before? Week before. Week before. Yeah, I think it might have been a week before. We were saying that it was rumoured that it was happening. But yeah, it, it is happening. Little trailer, we'll put it in the show notes. Not an awful lot was shown. <laughs> it's it's Dead Space. It's a remake. We spoke... <laughs> We spoke quite a bit about it before, and there's not much more we can really tell you other than be excited. Well, no, the only thing they've released is they've shown a necromorph in the distance, like standing up and its big spiked arms coming out. And then you see Isaac in his suit at a workbench, and it says, cut off the limbs written in blood or something on the wall. That's it. So with that, though, we're also... See, and eBay are actually getting rid of Steam Deck scalpers. Yes. Oh, fantastic news. Fantastic <laughs> well, news. I, I actually showed Anthony this, was it yesterday, and there wasn't a single Steam yeah, Deck available we, on eBay. Wow. We were talking about it yesterday, and they had a quick look, and there was nothing at all. Yes. And I commend eBay for it, if I'm honest. You know, as much as they may stuff people over <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> let's, let's leave it there. They're doing a good thing here, because scalping from with the PS5 and the Xbox, it really tainted. It was really horrible now, to see. And just, now they've done this. And just here, to clarify, just, though. I was going to say, here's the cynical question. Have they done this to get rid of scalpers, or have they done this because they can't guarantee to ship within 30 days of the pre-sale? Well, that's why I was about to say. Second one. In all fairness, they're not specifically going against scalpers. This is a part of the terms of service that was in place already, and they're just enforcing it. Yeah, so we, we say good on eBay, but it's not the fact that it's helping people not get scat, not get. There is that. Um, yeah, there is that. Way overpriced for yeah. the Steam decks. Has anybody tried to sell a picture of a Steam Deck yet? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> or an Xbox's box's box. Yeah. How oh, people fall for those, I don't know. Stupidity. Hopefully, it will help deduce the amount of scalping being done and if anything the scalpers also maybe don't want to purchase it the device at all and won't actually buy the console. No, i still reckon they'll try and buy as many as they can yeah i know well I know. yeah they're still limited to one per account and the account well, has to yeah. have had a game before a certain date to be within the first wave i'm hoping that some people will think oh i can't sell it now cancel the pre-order and i might be pushed into december rather than the first quarter of 2022 <laughs> yeah <laughs> you That's might you might get your you might get it this year. Yeah, yeah. This year, there's only five months left. Yeah, I know, but it gets oh, released in December. I know. Oh. Oh, let's face it, 2022 can't be any worse than... <laughs> no, I won't, I won't finish that. No, sentence. please don't say it. Please do not finish it. Well, Shush. let's end on a bit of a high. You know, a bit of good news with eBay. Um, Battlefield 2042 Portal. Have you guys seen this? Yes. yes. Oh, I yes. can't wait for the game in general. Um, but this portal mode looks absolutely amazing. It's an interesting idea. Especially one of the game types we saw. Yes. Yeah, all that game type. That game type. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently it's heavily customizable. If you want, you can have future soldiers versus 1942 soldiers. And you can balance the game. You know, you can tweak it. You can make it a fun, balanced game. Or you can think, fuck that. I'm just going to have two heavily armored soldiers versus 30 World War II era troops. And just Again, that wreck sounds them. amazing. Walking around in like a bomb suit where you've got like, you basically a juggernaut yes. with like, like machine guns 
two people walking out, and then 30 people trying to take them two down. I think that sounds what? amazing. <laughs> Part of the trailer that I saw that I was like, uh, what was a Spitfire dog fighting an F-22 Raptor? Oh, that's, that's, um, that's balanced. We all know which way that's <laughs> going to go. Some of the other modes that they've shown was, um, I think it was 20 people in the bomb disposal drones. Do you know the yeah, little yes. remote control yes. drone type things? Fighting a modern tank. <laughs> <laughs> so this tank's just wrecking all these drones, but it's it's like a horde of zombies. They're finally They're slowly getting closer whittling it down. Closer, and then just like little blow torches or whatever it is that they have just whittling its health down. <laughs> the one that um, me and Phil saw very interested interested in was the defibrillators versus knives. Yeah, yeah, that, that looked right. amazing. I was thinking, uh, wouldn't that be a bit unfair? Because surely the team with the defibs would be able to res their own teammates. Maybe, maybe turn off. Maybe it gets turned off. Maybe yeah, too. perhaps they have oh, yeah. said that it's it's very customizable. It looks good, though. I mean, like a really good, fun genre. Uh, Especially considering we're we're getting all this from a trailer. Yeah. And this is included with the game as well. So they're bringing back a number of maps from Battlefield 1942, Bad Company 2, and Battlefield 3. You can play them, plus all the new maps for Battlefield 2042. And it's got the equipment, the vehicles. You can mix and match them. It looks like you could make some pretty fun game modes. Like the most obvious one that they talked about was infection. You know, there's one guy super fast with a knife. He stabs someone. They're now on the zombie team or the infected team. Probably not the best name to call it, actually, after the last couple of years. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe you take that one back a little bit. Yeah. But the fact that you can do bits like that, you can have a well-equipped small strike team where they've got a complete an objective and the enemies from Battlefield 1942 with all their antiquated technology, it could be 4v32. And, you know, you may only have a set number of lives for the more modern soldiers, but infinite respawns on the other team, do you know, to balance it out that way. Yeah. Or even though they are on a one-on-one level, vastly superior the numbers and the fact that the enemy has unlimited tickets for example could balance the game out in other ways well i myself because i've been i played some of the battlefields and playing them i've been like oh i wish it had this still i wish it had this still uh, tracer darts was one of, one of my favorite things to use yeah is that is that what the show taking down the uh spitfire in the yeah. trailer and uh, i remember there was one map where it was an absolute massive map i remember using a tank just aim the barrel and just using it as artillery shells going across and you know you'll be able to kind of add to that back in again it's, yeah it, to me i think it's very good for people who miss the nostalgia of playing some of the older games here's the question though world war Two vets in operation metro <laughs> you know it's gonna happen i don't think metro yeah, is one of the maps it I has to be. I definitely, d- I definitely didn't Metro? see it. I don't know. It, well, it might be. Oh, don't, hang on, don't kill it. It might not just shown it. Don't shoot the messenger. It might be. <laughs> it I just didn't it. see it. How can you not have Metro in the game? One thing I would be interested in seeing as well that the trailer doesn't really touch on is can you have more than two games worth of content? So they show you can have Battlefield 1942 and Battlefield 3 or Battlefield bad company in battlefield 2042 but could you have say some items from 1942 some from battlefield bad company and some from 2042 at this in the same match i don't know so i don't know how flexible Mm. they have said it is not a level editor you can't change the level you can just change the rules of the engagement i think it's one of these where we'll have to wait and see ultimately yeah, and this is something that's included with the game. It's not paid for DLC or an extra version of the game or anything. So, good on that. There might be at least more details coming towards it. So, yeah. we might have a bit more of an idea. There might be more some gameplay about it. Yeah. But I'm excited. Yeah, um, I think that brings us to the end of our episode. It's been a it does. 
bit of a odd one to be roller honest. coaster ride. Mm. Though obviously, if you have enjoyed what you've been listening to, please do think about supporting us on Patreon, leaving us a review. We would really appreciate it. It doesn't have to be a monetary donation or anything like that. Although, Patreon supporters do get to select our upcoming game club games with our first and only current Patreon actually picking our next title after we finally finished Perfect Dark, which is taking a little bit longer because someone keeps swanning away on holiday. Sorry. Actually, I think both of you have been away on holiday while playing. Yeah, we both have actually been on holiday. Yeah, I don't get holidays. 